Hi, so gear cutting. It, it's one of those things that certainly gives me the willies and I'm sure it's not something most people look forward to. But every now and then you do need gears. Now, we did a method before where we used a, a plastic disc and we glued some tooth belt around it and it made a kind of gear, which was, you know, useful and, and did a good job and was very quick. But it has its drawbacks, obviously. So what I thought I would do was have a, a better way of cutting gears. Now, I was going to put this on the members channel, but then I thought, actually, it's really very useful. And although it might be one of those things you don't think is useful, it's one of those things to have in the back of your mind when you want to come to cutting gears. Now, there is a bit of math involved, a little bit of geometry, but I'm going to go through it. So let me give you a close-up of that. Okay, so the first thing you have to decide, really, is how big you want your gear. And then you've got to decide roughly how big you want your teeth, because obviously you can make teeth really small, you can make your gear really big, you can make your gear really tiny and your teeth really big. You kind of have to make that decision. And that decision really is just what looks good to you. It's kind of rule of thumb. It's going to be trying a few, having a few mechanisms and seeing what's sensible to you. Now I want a gear round about that size as it happens. And to my mind, something about that size has about, I don't know, somewhere between 12 and 20 teeth on it and I want a good chunky tooth so the tooth size I've picked on is actually eight millimeters in size and that means I need a nine millimeter little hollow for it to go in because I need a little bit of slack so I've got two drill bits here eight millimeters and nine millimeters now if I drill a nine millimeter hole I know that eight millimeter is going to fit in there with a little bit of slack so that eight and nine are going to be my guide to how far apart to put these things and how big to make them. Now if I add eight and nine together, then obviously I get 17. Now I want 12 teeth. I want 12 teeth because I think that'll be a reasonable size. If I multiply my 12 by 17, because I've got 12 teeth, and they're going to be 17 millimeters apart, then I get 204 millimeters. Or if you like, 20.4 centimeters. Now I'm not going to put those in a line, I'm going to put them around a circle. So I need this circumference to be 24, uh, 20.4 centimeters. Now obviously if we think about pi times diameter, that will give me the circumference. So if I divide 20.4 by pi, I'll get the diameter, which is equal 6.5 centimeters. So I need a circle 6.5 centimeters big. The radius of that obviously is 3.25. So if I take my compass, set it at 3.25 and draw a circle, that circle will have a circumference of 20.4 centimetres on which I can get 12 of these teeth. Now if I've got 12 teeth around there, then I'm putting it evenly around, and of course it's a circle. So it's 360 degrees I need to cover with 12 teeth. What that means is every 30 degrees I need to put a tooth. So I draw my circle, take a protractor and mark every 30 degrees around that circle. And that's exactly what I've done here on this bit of MDF. So there's my circle, and that circle has a radius of 3.25, a diameter of 6.5 and a circumference of 20.4. And if I look at that, it's actually about right. It's quite kind of a nice size for me. Now, you can make these decisions however you want to fit what it is you're doing. I'm just choosing those sizes and showing you the methodology. So I've marked every 30 degrees. Then on the next circle, I've drilled a 9mm hole every 30 degrees. That hole is 9mm, and the distance between those two is 8mm, and we know that from what we did before. So when I've done that, I can take an 8mm guide. In this case, it's a bit of cut-off bar that I use, although you could set your um, compass to 8mm and give that a go if you like, but I've used that 8mm uh, bar, which is this here, and I just put that by eye, because we're working in wood, we've got a bit of slack, and draw around that edge. And that's what I get here. So you can see that this is beginning to look like a gear now. We've got our hollows, we've got our 8mm tooth coming out, so when we cut this out, that tooth will intersect with that hollow, leaving me a little half millimetre gap on either side. Now I've cut that and drawn that out, I need to cut it out. So I took a circular saw, sorry, a um, jigsaw, 
and cut out the piece that I want. So what I have to do now is remove this extra little bit here, leaving me that round tooth, and that's what I'm going to do next. So when you cut it out, it looks a bit rough like that. But there are a couple of little simple tools you can make. The first one's dead simple. In fact, they're both dead simple. It's just a flat bar of metal, and I've double-sided some sandpaper on it. This is a P60 grit. Then what you do is you stick your cog into a vise and use your sandpaper file to take off the worst of those edges and just go around it taking off the edges. And the second useful tool is this is just a bit of 8mm bar again with some sandpaper glued to it. And if you do it through there on the table then it helps even up any of the little irregularities you might have put in there. <laughs> them, screw it to a board in the rough approximation of the gear train that you want, give it a spin and just check how it spins. Now if it does bind you might have to adjust a couple of the teeth, just do that by sanding them or trimming them off until you can get it to spin quite nicely. Okay, so I thought that was a cool way of making wooden gears, so I thought I'd share it with you. Uh, I've got a Dremel, so I'm going to finish those off with a Dremel. I won't on the assumption you didn't, obviously the more tools you have the better basically. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.